made them on a large scale power system. And the only simulation tool we had was P-SPICE. And we did everything with P-SPICE where we wrote our own models. And I started doing some research and we found this thing called EMTP. And boy, it was a game changer as far as the models that were in there and being able to model some of the generator responses. And it was, uh, it was a great thing. I, I'm not even sure, I'll get with, uh, uh, find out whether they still have a copy of EMTP or not at my old company. But it was, a, uh, it, was, it was a great find. And actually, I took the training up in Montreal and John was one of the instructors. And um, actually, I met someone that, that worked at EPRI and that's how I came. That's how I found my next uh, job with with Epry. So uh, EMTP will change your life. And, uh, I don't know. Maybe you've met your future spouse on the riverboat cruise or something last night, or maybe one of these cat houses on Bourbon Street. Who knows? <laughs> but uh, yeah, EMTP's been good, and it's really um, uh, kind of steered my career. And I've been dealing a lot with EMTP and also with other software, but. Uh, when it comes to time domain analysis, um, you know, I prefer RV, especially on the, uh, the um, power system analysis. Well, with all that said, Wayne gave a nice background, and EPRI's been involved a lot with EMTP RV with some of the contracts we've had with John and um, Wayne, and, and, and Brad has contracts with uh, using EMTP RV. But EPRI has put out uh, a few application guides, and we actually have a couple scheduled for this year. Um, one being performing the open phase analysis using EMTP RV and also an application guide for determined T values. I saw Orlados has a, con a uh, presentation on that, so uh, uh, you know, I wish I could see what they have. I have a plane to catch, but um, you know, that's a, using EMTP to do some of these um, uh, studies to, to find out what the T values are because of the new OSHA rule change that Orlados, I'm sure, will get into. And before that, we actually did an application guide back in 2011 um, for using EMTB for doing um, transient studies uh, for sw different switching studies, lightning studies for uh, for large transmission systems. So we we've been using RV for a while. Um, with the um, respect to the open phase analysis, we've put out four publicly available documents where we've all used RV to do our analysis. And also using RV, we actually verify the results we were getting with RV with some of the, uh, some other software packages and, and, and showed that they all matched and we were all getting similar results. Just more of a verification of what we were expecting to get was real. And uh, like I said, all these documents are publicly available. If you want to get these, Wayne has those numbers and you can, you can download those. But uh, the open phase is um, something that I've dealt with a lot on the distribution side when you deal with fuses and ferro resonance issues, but it's something that um, a lot of transmission folks haven't dealt as much with, especially in terms of the unique situation that you have at a nuclear operating plant. And um, I'm going to go into the transformer model, some of the motor modeling that we performed. But uh, the real problem is when you have these station auxiliary transformers sitting there and they're sitting there lightly loaded or unloaded in a standby state, you want to know whether that um, transformer is available. Well, what has happened is in a few cases you get an open phase going to that transformer and depending on what type of transformer you have, you can actually recreate that voltage on the high side. So just a quick illustration here, you, you get an open phase and whether you have a buried delta uh, or a, um, a three-legged core, which is some kind of called a phantom tertiary, what happens is you get both these voltages here induced on this delta in order to solve this closed loop solution. What you get across this winding is what you would get is if the phase voltage was still there. So this phase voltage gets reflected over to here and you're sitting there at one per unit all at the correct phase angles and your system's sitting there at a reduced capacity and, and you don't know it. And that's where the real problem comes because a lot of traditional relaying can't detect that for certain types of uh, transformers. So um, with some of the research that we did, we went and 
and took a Wayne did a nice job taking a survey of all the different type of transformers that are out there in these um, um, switch yards and we modeled the different transformers to show uh, what the response is to an open phase condition here's just a table of um, different transformer types five-legged core uh, three single phase three-legged cores and the different winding configurations of you know those transformers that had this issue of recreating this voltage at the light and no low conditions and you can see here here's a uh, with the buried delta and with the three-legged core which again behaves like a uh, delta you recreate this voltages and you're sitting there all at one per unit so that was the real issues how do you detect this when you're sitting there at a reduced capacity and to illustrate uh, one of the issues you have when you're sitting there with a reduced capacity on your transformer is we looked at starting different motors um, we did a study for a particular plant that had a, um, a 6,000 horsepower reactive cooler pump and we had the uh, the motor parameters that we were provided and also the nameplate and information and so what we did was we um, modeled the uh, figured out what the uh, low torque characteristics were and we put that into an EMTP type model. We tested it, um, made sure that we got the responses across the line with 100% voltage and also with 80% voltage to make sure that we were getting reasonable results. And so we looked at that, we, we had the plant modeled, we had all the different type of transformers out there and we uh, wanted to see how it would behave you get an open phase and you try to start that reactive cooler pump. Well, um, under normal conditions, you can see here it starts up just like it, it has been. It takes about 17 and a half seconds, comes up to full speed. Um, again, this is with other motors connected to the same bus, trying to get a, a feel of how the motor started. If you have an open phase there and you try to start the motor um, with this particular reactor coolant pump, you can see here that you can't reach full speed um, in that condition. You want to make sure that you have a system that's available and has the capacity to operate. And then you look at it with other motors connected. Well, this is what happens. You can't get the motor up to speed and it's kind of a um, positive feedback type of event because if you're looking at voltage, your voltages droop, but then they all go back to normal when your motors don't start. And, they, and you're kind of in a repetitive loop. The operators don't understand what's going on. And so that's kind of one of the difficulties of depending on uh, something such as voltage protection on some of these um, type of transformers. Uh, so the conclusion of a lot of the studies that we've done is um, when you're sitting there at reduced capacity, you do have a vulnerability that you should be able to be able to detect that under all operating conditions. Um, the, uh, the different transformers, we are identified with the different modeling. Again, we had an extensive background at EPRI with, especially on the distribution side, dealing with the open phase conditions and doing different modeling for fair residents and different open phase conditions that are more um, common on the distribution side, which we were able to translate into our modeling for the station auxiliary transformers. Um, another thing is your, your fault placement. We looked at faults on the secondary. On the faults on the secondary, these are feeding um, delta Y type transformers in this particular plant. So as with the table we showed before, if you have motors there, you get an open upstream of a delta on the secondary side of the station auxiliary transformer, you can see you get a large voltage drop and you can detect that with your just your conventional under voltage relaying. Um, and the same thing with the heavy load case, that was a light load case is with motor loads. Again, if you get an open phase on the secondary, it's feeding the delta and it kind of goes back to that table I showed you earlier where you don't get the recreation in the voltage and your voltage drop. So, you can uh, use just your conventional voltage relay on that. So it all depends on what type of transformers you have, where the open phase is, and uh, what your operating conditions are. Uh, another thing, while we were working on this, there was a double open phase event 
Uh, Wayne can probably give you more information on that afterwards if you want to talk to him about it. But it was, a, it was actually across, it wasn't in this country, it was in another country where they actually had a double open phase event. So we were tasked with going back and looking at the different transformers with a double open phase event. Well, basically what you get is uh, under, uh, this is no load conditions and there weren't, any, there weren't any cases where we were able to start motors, but you can see that you get a, um, you know, a worse, it's, it, it, it acts worse than what the single open phase was. So no surprise there, but it does have some unique characteristics. Um, for example, if you have a delta Y, if you get two open phases, basically you just have one wire coming in. You can't support anything that way. So um, that's easily detected. Um, you know, this is a shell core Y Again, you open up two phases, your motors wind down, and again, it's uh, pretty straightforward detecting that. Now, one of the unique cases, and this was actually what happened, uh, was that they had a Y delta type transformer. Well, if you have motors spinning, you open both of these, those, the motor will keep that going, and the motor will continue to operate, albeit with a very distorted voltage. But again, it's just much like the single phase, single open phase event, you just get more exaggerated results with the double open phase. So the ones that have the problem, single open phase have a problem with the double open phase, uh, especially if you have motors operating. So uh, general conclusions, um, the, the no load conditions with the double open phase result in low voltage conditions and the, and, and the transformers exhibit the issue with the single open phase exhibit the same issues with the double open phase. Now I'll get into some of the um, other work that uh, we've done at EPRI and the, um, we talked a lot about scripting. Well, we really put it to use when we looked at um, the, uh, the new OSHA ruling. They came back wanting to know what the variables were that were important, that were important in doing these uh, transient overvoltage studies. Well, we were able to run 150,000 perturbations, different studies, looking at three different voltage classes of seeing what re impacted your T values when you start, um, when you would go back to do your modeling so you don't have to model every single case. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on that, but just to highlight what a valuable tool EMTP was, and we were able to perform 150,000 simulations. We had a very tight time crunch because the ruling came out and they had to put something in by April and we were able to put out a report um, on that, which had, which had very good results. Um, some of the other work we conducted at EPRI using RV, um, switching studies, a lot of fair resident studies. This is a sample of a fair resident study I performed. Lightning insulation coordination and Again, uh, one of the powerful things with EMTP is the controls that you can implement. And, you know, going back to my early days, you know, you don't need a switching model to model what you want on the power system. And that was one of the greatest things using the RV was to be able to put controls, to be able to put in the behavioral models and increase your simulation time, able to do more runs and actually getting the results that you want without all the complications that come along with running a switching model. Um, system imbalances, um, a lot of system imbalance studies, you can, can lump open phase in there with system imbalance, uh, motor starting, electrical cars, PHEVs, they, uh, we've done a lot of work with that, especially when the controls of, uh, of modeling the, uh, the behavior of uh, charging a uh, electric vehicle, and uh, DG studies, John's been involved in those, a lot of cutting edge stuff, uh, especially when it comes to the inverter models, the wind models, a lot of things out there that don't have answers yet. Uh, um, Epper's really been uh, looking into with the help that John, John's been providing in those models. Well, I went through that fast, but uh, I'll save some time for some questions. Thank you very much, Bob, for this uh, compelling presentation. Any question for Bob or for Wayne? Yes, I, I use I use BC Tran. Also, I uh, the you know we like I said we verified the results with another program, which was a phaser domain program. 
and you were able to model the pore characteristics with just you know doing an analogy type of winding on there and we, we were able to match up what the test sheets were and with that we were able to get the same results with the BC train model as we were with just using your winding models which would be something equivalent to a BC train but just not putting in the information like you would with the BC train. Does that make sense? Yeah, John. Actually, when you do all the sophistication with BC Tamara, I have okay, fine, but you don't really need to do all the sophistication that was in Exactly, and that was one of the things that, you know, we knew that with all the other studies we've done of modeling different transformers. Um, but, um, you know, BC Tran, you, you can do more than three. Why? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. You, know, you know, both of them have their, their, but you didn't have to use BC Tran. And you, there was a lot of folks that made this more complicated than what it was uh, just because there was a lot of unknowns there and a lot of parameters that were being asked that you know if you have a delta winding in there it really doesn't matter much what your core is it's it's, it's just one of those things that uh, you know there's a lot of education that's going along with it too Yeah, and it, it all depends on what your settings are. Oh, okay, um, okay. But, you know, a lot of these transformers are sitting there, they're 45, 60 MVA. Okay. You know, you, ah, okay, okay. You, you, you take a 45, 60 MVA transformer, you put a 100 horsepower motor on there, it's like you don't have any load it's on that. Still okay, right. The, the yeah, and, and that's the primary operating mode of these transformers is you're sitting there unloaded, mm -hmm. but you want to make sure it's available when you switch over to it. So. It Right. If you, if you have a yeah, if you, the loaded cases weren't ever an issue. You know, we put out a, that was the second report we put out, which basically said if you had a certain percentage of load, it gets you above the threshold of where you can detect this with just your conventional relay. Um, but you want enough load in there that you get above the noise, and that was one of the challenges too. Because if you start trying to get the settings down as low as you can, you're never going to be that accurate in your modeling. You're never going to have you know the accuracy I don't care what you do to be able to predict performance like that you know if the if the Sun heats up one side of the transformer before it heats up the other side you're going to have nuisance operations so you got to get above that threshold and it with these large transformers it took a substantial amount of load to do that That'd be great, especially with the synchronous machine model. I, I guess one of the follow-ups were that you didn't talk about today, which I thought was pretty uh, neat that Epri came up with, was the solution. I think the PSS Tech, I don't know if you have a moment to just kind yeah. of explain to people that. And that's using the, the RV software, yeah, also, which I yeah. thought was really unique. Yeah, actually, thanks, Tom. Yeah, it's uh, something I've been working on. I'm actually with the uh, manufacturer right now, helping with the tech transfer. For EPRI, but what EPRI did was we knew it was the no load and the light load cases. So basically, what we're doing is we're looking at the zero sequence impedance of that transformer by looking at an, an act with, with, along with an active detection, also a passive detection. Because uh, basically, let me go back up here. Let's get a better picture here. Because basically what happens when you open this phase is this neutral con connection becomes your third phase. And so, like John said, when you have load on there, you have enough current there where you can detect that. It was the problem with the low, no, low load and no load cases. Well, what we came up with was a, a method to actually detect that zero sequence impedance. And when you get an open phase here, 
and you're sitting there at no load, you get a substantial change in that zero sequence impedance because of, um, it's a little bit hard to draw, but you can kind of think of it as a three-legged core. All that flux stays in that core, and so it basically becomes equivalent to your magnetizing impedance when you're sitting there with no load. So we actually did some testing we, at, at TVA on a um, station auxiliary transformer. We tested at no load, a light load, and actually medium load, just to show where we worked on all those operating scenarios, and we were able to detect an open phase. And again, it was able to detect it on the no load case, and the fact that you get such large parameter changes, you're above that noise threshold. And it doesn't take a lot of accuracy to, to, to set your settings on the device, which is a really plus, especially since the learning curve and everything of doing a lot of studies is pretty substantial. And uh, so it's been a success, and thank you, Tom. It's, it's been really nice. It can do that. I haven't seen that, but it can do that. Software has its own its purpose, and you've got to be able to know when to use. It. You just want something in your toolbox to be able to use that. Thank you, very much. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Ryan. So we will take a very short break, and I will continue with the last three presentations. So we have Lados, Sacri, and also the Corporal Team in the Morel. We can, yeah.